Thank you for choosing to watch this video of my tying of the pearly pennel, a variation on the classic black pennel and a great taker of fish in its own right. I have tied this fly sparsely, so the care is to be taken to keep everything neat and tidy and as slim as possible. Start by mounting your hook and device. Test the hook and the hold, make sure it's all good. Here I'm using the Fooling Mills Comp Heavyweight in size 14, it's a good strong barbless hook. Catch on your thread. This is Semperfly's Nano Silk in Black 18 knot. A really strong, fine thread, ideal for flies that you want to minimise bulk. Catch it on, trim off the waist, and then form your underbody, winding your thread down to the end of the shank in touching turns. The tail on this fly is Golden Pheasant Tippet. You want to select a feather that is sized so that the black bar will be visible just beyond the tie-in point and the length of the tail should be about the length of the body of the fly. I have tied the tail on this fly very sparse, only using a couple of fibres. This makes it a little bit fiddly to catch in on this size of fly, but take your time. Make sure you're not spreading the fibres around the hook shank. Catch them on once, make sure you're happy with where they're lying. Double check that it's all aligned on the top of the fly and reposition. And catch in with a second wrap. To minimise bulk, we'll catch in the rib now. And for the rib, I'm using fine wire from Semperfly. This is the Bright Silver 0.1mm wire, which is perfect for this size and style. Catch the rib in and tie everything down the length of the body to keep a smooth underbody for the fly. Take your time, make sure everything's sitting where you want it and that the underbody is smooth. One of the advantages of using the 18 knot nano silk is that you've got space to do another layer of thread wraps without building too much bulk and keeping the profile nice and slim. This just allows to make sure that we're happy with the underbody. Take the thread back up to just behind the eye of the hook, then we catch in the body material. Here we're using Semperfly's mirror tinsel in Mirage Iris. You know they have to be careful with the nano silk because it's quite slippy. You can pull the tinsel out quite easily as I have here. So I'm catching a bit longer, pull it to length so we're not leaving too much waste. Oh, done it again. Just take your time, just remember to unwind the thread wraps you've put on to catch in the tinsel so we don't build up the bulk. Maybe use a few more turns this time. Once you've got the tinsel tied in properly, wind it in touching turns down the body towards the tail and then overwrap it back up to your tying thread. Once you've got it up towards your tying thread, catch it in with a few turns. Trim away the waist and then we'll rib with the wire and we can tidy up the head once we've wound the rib. So wind the rib in open turns. Try to keep the angle of the wire consistent. This will give you a nice even ribbing. So four or five turns of rib is fine. Catch it in. One locking turn. Then helicopter off the waist to give a nice clean break. Tidy it up a little bit if you think it needs it, and then we should be ready to catch in the hen hackle. Here I'm using a Whiting Farms 4B hen in black. Pull back some of the fibres from the tip and catch in by the tip. With a few turns of thread, double the tip back, painting down back to the tying point, and break away the tip. 
hold the thread tight to make sure you don't pull the hackle as you break away the tip. And then we're ready to wind the hackle. So catch the end of the stock with your hackle pliers, fold the fibres back and keep folding them back to try and get them to sit nicely as you wind the hackle on. The number of turns of hackle you want will depend on the effect you want to achieve and the density of the barbules on the feather. Three or four turns should be plenty. Then catch in with your tang thread. You don't have to worry too much about the, where the barbules are going. You can tidy those up after. So a couple of turns only to minimise bulk. Fold everything back and bind back down with a few more wraps of thread to tidy and form a nice head. Once the head's formed we want to break away the waist hackle, hold the thread tight, you can use hackle pliers to grip the stock and break it away. If you're happy with how everything is sitting, the next step is to finish the fly. I'll use a two three turn whip finishes. One may be enough but the belt and braces of having the second one just makes it a little bit more secure. I always use a whip finish tool, as I think it gives me a neater finish, but you can always use your fingers if you want. Once you've got the whip finishes on, cut away the thread, and all that remains is to varnish the head of the fly. I'll use a thin UV resin here, but you can use any head cement or varnish you want. It's always good to make sure the head and eye are clear of any fluff or fibres before you apply your head cement. Take your time to make sure the head's properly covered in cement or varnish or resin in this case. Set it with a torch and that's the fly finished. You can tweak the fibres a bit with a bit of velcro if you want to get them sitting right, but that's it done. Thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please like it, and any comments and feedback are always appreciated.